Once again, I want to thank you all for joining us on this Wednesday evening. I'm David Tuckman. You're watching Hustler Casino Live, yeah. brought to you by High Stakes Poker okay. Productions. Made enough on the past games. Thank our sponsor, WPT Global, and of course, Ms. Botez for helping us organize this game. Magnus Carlson coming out. The number one ranked chess player in the world here on our show. All right. Do I, okay, he's going to raise like 500. Do I want to do that? No, I'm not. I promise I'll just call. I see you holding your stack of whites. Yeah, that was my bad. I was literally going to do one of these. So it was like, cool. We are playing a nice, friendly, casual 10 25 no limit Texas Hold'em game where the number one chess player in the world, Magnus Carlsen, he is a crusher at chess. I've been dying to ask you, how does the knights move? That's a good, uh, good question. He decides to play the 7-2 offsuit under the gun. Probably not a good idea. That said, they are playing the 7-deuce game where if you win a hand with 7-2 offsuit, you get $100 from each player. I think it's probably fine to play it in all scenarios. Given that's the case, maybe you want to raise bigger pre-flop than five big blinds. I know a five big blind raise may sound like a large amount, but they are playing $10,000 deep. I think perhaps even bigger is better, especially if that will make your opponents fold out a lot of their marginal stuff. And in this scenario, as you see, lots of people call with marginal stuff. Alexandra Botez, who won $500,000 recently at Hustler Casino Live, she opts to call the A7 suited in the hijack. Perfectly fine, perfectly good. Bryce calls King 10 suited. Nate calls a small blind with the 69 offsuit for fun. Nice. Enjoy. And Mariano decides to defend the big blind with the 5 4 offsuit. I think the 9 6 and the 5 4 defends are a little bit loose, but whatever. They came to play. Let's go to the flop. Those of you who are joining us in the Botez live chat, welcome. Crux TV over there asking if they're playing the 7 deuce game. They are. Has to be offsuit, apparently. And if you win a hand with 7 deuce. <laughs> which Magnus is attempting to do bit. right now. <laughs> just a little bit. But it's not gonna work, as we can see. Uh, but he's attempting it. He will get $100 from each person at the table. <laughs> it's worse when you get over. <laughs> I'll know how drunk I am once I have to go pee again. Yeah. Botez makes the call. Bryce calls. Five, four, five. Seat, seat five. Mariano's like, yeah, whatever. I know I'm behind. Maybe I'll get lucky and hit a five. The flop comes ace, ten, five, spade, heart, diamond. And the blinds check to Magnus with the seven, two offsuit. So look, whenever you raise a seven, two, and five people call you, you probably just have to get out of the way. The alternative is to just triple it off with your 7-2 offsuit. The problem with 7-2 offsuit is it has really, really bad blockers to your opponent's good hands. It does not have blockers at all, right? So, look, I realize you win an extra 700 if your flop continuation bet gets through, but very rarely is it actually going to get through, especially given the hijack and the cutoff call. They're going to have a lot of big cards. It's going to have an ace or a 10 a large chunk of the time. So as sad as it is, I think you're supposed to just check fold the 7-2. What can you do? That said, Magnus is not afraid. He's not a chicken like me. He goes for a $500 bet. Botez, of course, calls with her top pair backdoor flush draw. Bryce with his middle pair backdoor flush draw calls too. Mariano with the 5-4 splashes as well, which I think is probably fine, getting excellent pot odds. You do have to be very careful when you are playing, in his scenario, 200 big blinds deep from out of position with hands that can make strong but still second best hands. Like with 5-4, if you turn a 5 or a 4, and a lot of money goes in, you actually don't love it. So maybe you're supposed to ditch the 5-4 immediately. It's a tough spot. Whatever. He did not come to fold. Let's see what happens on the turn. He's asking for the card he wants. And instead, it gives Botez two pair. Magnus now drawing dead. He's going to keep hammering. Did I, I can't remember if I paid you already. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's, just, let's just do a little. Oh, he's, he's really raising. Cocktails? Sorry. Listen, you got to give Magnus Carlson a lot of credit here. He's got some heart. I mean, he bets 500 on the flop, gets called by three players, yet has no qualms about firing another bullet. 
That is that is ambitious. That is some heart. Rejuvenized. I thought we were friends. It's your money. <laughs> Mariano just he's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. Seventy seven hundred dollars in the pot. Three ways. The turn brings the seven of hearts. Magnus makes third pair. Botez makes two pair. Mariano and Bryce have nothing. Magnus decides to bet again. This time, $1,700. He is bumping it up. He's ready to play a big pot. When he turns the seven, look, I'm never in this scenario, but I think it's probably okay to start going for a triple barrel bluff for sure now, because now he blocks a lot of two pairs and random sets of sevens. Not that you're worried about the random set of sevens, but you definitely are worried about a seven, 10, seven suited and seven, five suited. These are hands that will call your flop bet every time that will never ever fold by the river, right? So whenever you are bluffing in scenarios like this, you really, really, really want to make it more difficult for your opponent to have a super nut hand that's just never going to fold. Now this time the blocker doesn't really help him because Botez does have the ace and the seven, but it's way more likely Botez has ace jack, ace nine, ace eight, ace six, ace four, ace three, ace two, right? Those are way more likely because there are more combinations of those. So look, I actually like Magnus's play at this point. I think he needs to go for it. And I would bet this turn looking to jam the river pretty much every time, assuming we get to the river heads up. If we get to the river three ways, it becomes way more dicey because whenever someone else calls behind, they have to have something really good, right? So anyway, Magnus goes 1700. Bote has opts to just call, which I think is good at this point. She's going to have a little bit less than a pot size bet remaining going to the river. So she knows she's just putting her money in on every river. It doesn't really matter what it is. Even a... 10 is not the end of the world because quite often Magnus is not going to bet the turn with very many 10s unless it's ace 10 or 10 7 suited. So Botez isn't looking to fold all that often in this scenario. So I like your call. The other two players, actually, no, the king 10 suited gets out of the way as it should. It's going to be very dominated in this scenario. We see it's actually not super duper dominated here, but it will be dominated by ace king a large chunk of the time or even ace 10 already. So that folds. The 5-4 offsuit decides to splash again. I think you just have to fold the 5-4 at this point. But Mariano doesn't like to fold today. Let's head on to the river. Oh, no. Magnus thinks that not only did he just get lucky and win the hands, but he's going to win $700 from the table as well because they're playing the 7-deuce game. Little does he know that Botez essentially has the nuts. Obviously, she doesn't have the nuts, but... What a run out. That is an absolutely filthy, dirty run out for that man right there. Is this mine or yours? <laughs> yours? What was a bluff is now being turned into a value bet, but we can see that it's obviously not going to work out well for the number one ranked chess player in the world. Every time I come here, every time I play on the stream, I get like strawberries and whipped and like... I've whipped. noticed. Everyone gets that. It is so That's the play. The river is the seven. That is a disaster for Magnus. At this point, he has a super duper easy all in because Botez and Mariano both have less than a pot size bet. This is a spot where some people bet a little bit smaller, hoping to try to extract maximum value. But you have to realize, whenever your opponents have less than a pot size bet, if they have any ace, they're just going to call. So this is an excellent spot to rip it all in and hope to get full value plus $700 on the side for fun. Ship the dough to Magnus. Somebody pointing out in the Botez live chat, this does not happen in chess. Good point. It does not. It's a good switch. It's like whipped cream. It's not like you're Botez about to win a big pot. But it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, can I get like the fruits with cream? I saw Sia eating it one time and I was like, I need to try that. And then every time I play. I mean, she's losing the tens full. You, know, you try to think of the hands that Magnus would theoretically play this way. <laughs> betting, betting, betting. 
she loses the tense fold, obviously she's not folding here no matter what. I guess it is my money. <laughs> All in. All in. I'll supposed to play tomorrow. I'm sorry. I want to say that thing and I forgot. Wait, yeah. it was yeah, I V. Yeah, I believe flux. Yeah, I believe flux. Oh. I had to do some. Oh, oh, and you were really good. Oh my god. But this time the money's not going to get shipped to Magnus because he has ran into the super duper nuts. Botez's A7 scoops the giant pot, wins all the money, and Magnus makes one of the most dejected faces I've ever seen at the poker table. Ugh. It's so brutal. Whenever you decide to run a bluff with a 7-2, and then you somehow make trips, and then somehow you still lose. Tough game. You don't even get the $700, and you're probably going to have to reload. Tough luck for the number one chess player in the world. Luckily, he can go back to chess and still crush everyone there. Hustler Casino Live actually just announced that they have a million dollar buy-in cash game happening very, very soon. They just released the lineup. And what I want to know is who do you think is going to be the biggest winner in this game and by how much? And to spice things up a little bit, the person with the closest answer for the correct player who's the biggest winner is going to get a free month of my training site, Poker Coaching Premium. Good luck. Let me know in the comments below who you think is going to be the biggest winner and by how much. And if you want to go check out a video where we show Botez crushing the game in the session where she ended up winning half a million dollars, we have it lined up for you next. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Make the most of your opportunities. And if you ever happen to find yourself playing against the best chess player in the world, make sure you're playing them at poker.